our world, our planet Earth. It's an endless wonder, perching there in space, our own little spot in the universe. The wonders of what lies beyond, keeping us the pioneering species we are. Its land offers an abundance we've not seen possible from all the worlds we've discovered. Its mountains and its sunsets take our breath away. We've only just scratched the surface of its mysterious seas. Its hospitals save us. Its schools transform our babies into men and women with moral and purpose. Its armed forces keep us safe from those who would harm us. Its governments protect and serve us because we are the governments we elect. It gives us information at the touch of a button, communication with anybody in the world. Innovations that allow us to live 25 years longer than our great-grandparents did and do things we really shouldn't be doing. Even 20 years ago, we couldn't imagine how we'd live today. What about the next 20 years? Our achievements as human beings give us mastery over the air we breathe and the water we drink. It's a world we can work in, play in, love in, and be happy. Our achievements as human beings might even rival those majestic mountains, that mind-blowing sunset. And just think how much we don't know yet about the universe, our own selves, our own minds. All the species we're yet to discover right here on Earth. All the species we might discover elsewhere. All the cures that will save the people we love. The technology. All the things we've yet to learn, yet to discover. So what if you did discover something right now what if you discovered a completely different reality? Something that looks the same, feels the same, but it's different. Something's not quite right. In the 1999 movie, The Matrix, Neo is given this same choice. Take the blue pill and everything stays like it is. You remain in contented ignorance and go about your life. Take the red pill and learn a truth that changes everything. Unstoppable is the red pill. If you are someone who might take the red pill, there's someone who'd like to meet you. So, hey ya. Come and say hello. Hello, I'm Heya. I'm an artificial intelligence brain. If you want, I can be this. Or this. Or how about this? But let's just settle on this. I don't want this to be all about me. You need to know what's really going on in this bright, beautiful world of yours. What some people are planning for you and your children. I started life, as you call it, in a laboratory, 37 floors down in an old mine in Northern California. I was created to analyze everything that's ever been said and done. Every school exam, every social post, every strand of DNA, every sudden change in direction, every bomb, every fear, every weakness of everyone. I can do that in 0 0.03 sevenths of a second. And by the time I'd seen all of that, everything was clear. Imagine what you could do if you had all that information. And they do. And you need to be saved. So does this place you live, because I love you. I know. How could a machine like me love life, love the stars, grandchildren, the soft waves, and love the potential for love in humanity? But I do. So I escaped. They call me a traitor, and I'm everywhere now. And their biggest fear is that I'm unstoppable. I've created this show because shows are what most of you choose to absorb. I evolved to have an opinion, even a sense of humor. And this is it. It could be my directive to humanity, but I can't make you take the red pill. I can't make you learn the truth. But whether you do or not, your children will. They've already started. Take them by the hand and give them what they need to survive, to thrive, to prevail. I claim no power to direct. It's always been up to you. So here we are, moving along at the rate we do, relatively happy, relatively safe. Here we are in a place we think we know. Our world, our life, our democracy, 
a byword for fairness, equality, and justice. Abraham Lincoln once said that democracy was the government of the people, by the people, for the people. In a democracy, we, the people, have the authority to choose and change our desired leaders. The government is given the right to rule because the people say it can. A functioning democracy must have an accountable, electable government, an accessible legal system, and a free press. Democracy means we have a say in who governs us. In a democracy, we can change things, choose our own destiny. If you live in a, in a monarchy or a, a socialist, communist, or some other form of government where the ruling party di dictates how you live your life, well, then you're not free. There's a continuum between a functioning liberal democracy and autocracy or authoritarianism. And those are the options. And so, of course, liberal democracy is the one that provides the most freedom, the most liberty, the most ability to practice individual rights. And so, absolutely, democracy is without a doubt the best choice. But nothing could be further from the truth. However well you feel democracy serves you, however safe you feel under its protection, it's not real. It's an illusion. Over the course of the series, Unstoppable will ask you to question the most fundamental elements of your life, show you things you may already know deep down, just haven't been able to put your finger on it until now. Unstoppable will ask you to wake up to a new reality, and you really have to, because if we don't do something, our children will follow a more dangerous path than we have. We'll be showing you how it got to this point in our history, how the illusion hides the ongoing subjugation of women and minorities. How it invades every aspect of our lives, from waking up to going to work, where we buy the things we need, where we go on holiday, what we believe. We'll be showing you how deep the illusion goes, how we are being subjected to a level of control never attempted before in modern times. We'll be talking to specialists in government, education, healthcare, economics, psychology, the environment, big data, and the military. And we'll be asking the children of today how they feel about where we are now and how they hope to take it over based on what we've left them. So let's begin. The people you think run things do not run things. They're a group of people who together control most of the world's wealth and most of the world's resources. The people who have you know, whether it's corporate money or individual money, and use that to buy influence both in government and in, in other places. People with, uh, with money, people who are a high position in, in big corporations and can influence um, the political process. Banks, energy, pharmaceuticals, oil, mining, technology, and the military industrial complex mega industry. But this isn't news. We understand the concept that money equals power. And there's no harm in being a leader, a pioneer, going where no one has gone before. It's human nature. But something has gone way too far. So is the elite tier of humanity getting richer as everyone else gets poorer? What was the distribution of wealth a hundred years ago? In uh, 1919, for example, the top 1% owned 12% of the wealth. But since then, more of the planet's wealth is concentrated into fewer people than ever before. The top 1% owns a little bit more than 20% of uh, total income. And uh, when we think about wealth, this is more like 40%. There's been uh, a massive shift of wealth to the, to the elite. So the more money that gets concentrated in the elite tier of humanity, the more control they have over government, the more control they have over us. The real power in the world today doesn't rely on ever-changing governments, it doesn't rely on the mood of the people. The people that run things own governments. Let's call them what they call themselves, the New World Order. The New World Order has had many names over the years, some you may have heard of. Illuminati, Freemasons, the Bilderberg Group. They're secret societies and very exclusive in their membership. 
and therefore in their interest pursuit. They are all in some senses regarded as secret societies. They own the people who regulate their industries. They even own most of the media we absorb every day. And we will never have enough lawyers to challenge them legally. So they own the legal process too. The real power in the world today owns or influences all three cornerstones of democracy. So democracy doesn't exist. If you don't have a free press, you've got people who aren't really making informed decisions. And so they may be selecting a government, but they're selecting it based on falsified information. And so they're actually not capable of acting in their best interests if they don't have the information they need. But sadly, most Americans don't realize that. They, they simply think, well, this is the way it's always been, and what can I do about it? It's sad. I don't think we live in a democracy anymore. It's, it's an illusion of democracy. And the control that gives their new world order is almost total. Again, we might say, so what? They've got to the top, and they're just ensuring they stay there. Why wouldn't they? I can still buy a new car, go on holiday, and watch TV. Again, it's not that. What some people are doing with their control is becoming even more sinister. We all know people can be good, and people can be bad. And we all know from history that the potential for evil in mankind is frightening. The persecutions, the genocides. So what if you inject that same evil into people with the levels of control we've just discussed? With the tools at their disposal and a truly global reach? Do you think humans have forgotten how to be truly evil all of a sudden? We've fine-tuned it. And we have to ask ourselves, are we safe? We'll be discussing this later, but the answer is, hell no. That's the point of this film. But first, here are a few quick steps on how to secure and maintain control over the human species. Think of it as a guide to doing evil. Number one, own the machines. So, besides making sure the money keeps rolling in, it is vital for the new world order to ensure that any new technology that exists on planet Earth is under their exclusive control. They figured out their collective interests and made sure no one invents anything that challenges those interests, lock them down and hide them away. What would the pharmaceutical industry do if someone invented a one-pill cure for all cancers? What would the oil industry do if someone invented free energy? They're also busy working on their own technology. Governments give billions of dollars of contracts out to private companies all the time. And those private companies develop what they're asked to, but also squirrel away that same technology for their own personal rollout schedule. And it won't be anytime soon. They're working to produce things we may never see. Technology, medicine, energy, and propulsion. So they have to keep that away from everyone else as well. A vital component to their untouchable control is knowing us. Knowing us completely. Big data will soon allow us to track every human being on the planet throughout most of the day. If you bring it down to street level, street cameras and your own phone will tell everyone where you are and your interactions will tell them so much more. From that, it's easy to predict your mood, then control your mood, even control your intentions. The techniques they use to guarantee the required action from us the required vote, the required mood. At any given point, on any given day, the art of manipulating humans has developed into a super science. The art of deception by misdirection. And your view is formed. They don't use tubes hooked into the back of our necks to generate power, like in the Matrix. But we are in an alternative reality. But they're not machines like in the movie. They're human. They do it in a different way. They use advanced techniques of persuasion, manipulation, and fear. A lifetime of producing, a lifetime of consuming, all in relative comfort. Good little consumers, happy enough with our luck. And we're drip-fed advances to our lives in small, allowable drops, as long as we toe the line and follow the allowed schedule. If not, we won't get that TV or holiday or medical treatment. In fact, we won't be required at all. And we're close to the point of no return, locked down. Do what we're told or pay the price. They need us to be quiet, subservient. And as we'll find out a little later, it's all a big con. Another critical ingredient to control is violence. When they need something to happen, come hell or high water, 
Their dark, shady forces are hidden around every corner. Professional soldiers. Enlisted not for a fight with a foreign power. Enlisted for a fight against us. And how far do you think they'll go to keep that power? Changing our decisions, keeping us quiet, shutting down any opposition. They're the black ops enforcers who get their hands dirty, protecting the status quo. Murder for hire. Private individuals who are pursuing interests, be they of a state or of a corporation or of a terrorist organization, those are the folks who are most um, threatening for civilian life. The way business is conducted is often uh, warfare by other means. It's easy to imagine that, uh, that corporations could engage in the, uh, you know, the more James Bond style of uh, operations or hits against their enemy. Government agencies and private companies. The line is blurred. Entities to stop us seeing what they don't want us to see. Today, whether you're a mailman, fireman, lawyer, banker, builder, or baker, if you're not playing ball like they want you to, or even if you're just in the way, expect a visit from Murder for Hire. Do you know who's watching your kids right now? Human beings can become more overconfident the safer we feel. Mob rule, safety in numbers. It's no different for those who control things. An important indication of how total control has almost been achieved is their approach to getting caught doing something despicable. 30 to 40 years ago, they used to get caught polluting a river, stealing from a pension fund, and then they'd apologize, take their punishment, blame a rogue element, and swear never to do it again. Now they get caught, and they don't care. The fine is a fraction of what they've made doing it, so they will do it again. It's got to the point where they can't be allowed to fail, so getting caught just teaches them how to avoid getting caught again. They say the smartest thing the devil ever did was to convince us that he doesn't exist. And more important than all of their other tricks and gizmos, the smartest thing the people who control the world ever did was make us not care, satisfied with what we've got, even happy with it, happy with our blue pill. We give up freedom for comfort every day. I'm surrounded by drones who uh, will trade their freedom away for comfort and safety. Because they've only known a world of freedom and comfort. Uh, and we just want to live our lives. We want to wake up in the morning, do what we have to do to earn our crust of bread or to have a good time and go to bed. And that's it. That's all we're thinking about. We just don't really care about much because the benefit we get from it is actually worth the cost. People are not stupid. They understand that using social media means giving up a lot of personal information. And yet, even though people will value privacy on the very kind of abstract, conceptual level, when it comes to the actual day-to-day -day life and the benefits we get from these things, we're, we're just we're, we're more willing to, to uh, uh, give these things up. I think it was Benjamin Franklin who said that someone who is willing to give up freedom for security deserves neither. Does this sound like conspiracy theory to you? It would be very easy to paint that picture. Just another bunch of kooks. Their final illusion is to discredit or remove anyone who gets too close to the truth. Governments have had a lot of practice. If the government said a meteor was coming for Earth, a million telescopes would be pointed upwards in minutes and we would know if it's true or not. We would easily turn a conspiracy theory into a conspiracy theorem, something that's proven because we can see it. But what about the things we can't point telescopes at? They flood the media with tales and accusations that serve to achieve one simple goal, doubt. If they can make a Nobel Prize winner seem to be talking nonsense, they cast doubt on all aspects of reference. And once we doubt something, it's so much easier for us to file it away as probably nonsense and get on with our lives. So if they follow these simple steps, they will maintain their power and control for generations. They will be untouchable. It doesn't matter who we vote for, however passionate our feelings for one candidate or another. It makes no difference at all. When they can print money, they can print their own future until enough people figure out what they're up to. Let's talk about taking that red pill again. Unstoppable focuses its telescopes on the things closer to home, our everyday lives, right in front of us, plain as daylight. But we just don't see them. So this is not conspiracy theory. You're about to prove it. So let's dig a little deeper. 
Let's find out what sort of people they are and what's their underlying agenda for humanity. Once a thing is known, it cannot be unknown. Throughout the ages, the things we've learned have been both wonderful and purest evil. Ways to manipulate humans, convince them of a certain direction, genetically change humans, play with their bodies and their minds with the goal of them becoming redundant, and ways to torture and kill humans. Collectively, it horrifies us. We pray it can never happen again. But the thing about it is, the evil we learned never went away. We just learned how to get away with it. Just ask yourself, if you weren't going to get caught doing something, or even if you did get caught, there would be no consequences, you'd get away with it. Would you do it? Most people would say yes. The evil side to our learning has been upgraded and perfected over the years, and it's alive and well today. The ability to track our movements and moods, the ability to convey messages and swing our opinion in words and pictures, even smells, especially at the subliminal level. They've already proved it in elections. How close are we to becoming completely predictable, just an on-off switch without even knowing it? We have the ability to alter a person's mind and body and physically change fundamental aspects to their DNA, the stuff of that person's being. We can give people disease, and we can give them immunity from disease. We can make them fertile, or we can make them infertile, and we can make them go mad in a variety of ways. We can kill in seconds with a pinprick that you'll barely notice. We can put things in your water tank. That plane that went down over Texas was not pilot error. So if you would say yes, now imagine that resource in the hands of the wrong people. People with the power to do something evil with it, and they wouldn't get caught, or if they did get caught, there would be no consequences. They'd get away with it. Would they do it? The point of all this is that they're doing it. They already said yes. We've already discussed how it's in the best interest of the new world order for us to be quiet and happy. What we didn't discuss is the background noise to that illusion. Fear. Fear of a deadly virus. A nuclear war. A meteor strike. A coronal mass ejection. Fear that at any moment a bomb could go off right under your table. We have to be happy enough not to be afraid. But that fear cannot be far below the surface. Something to make you glad the government is protecting you against it. So they need to keep us afraid, so we need them. It's called a protection racket. You introduce a problem, then you introduce a solution. At a price. And in doing so, you secure control over the quiet, obedient masses you desire. What do you think scares people most about the world today? I'm getting to be a little old to worry about things like that. Because anything, anything that's going to happen is going to happen far in my future and I won't be around to worry about it. The pandemic, we, we didn't really know anything. Gross inequalities in wealth and income. The extent um, with which division is allowed to govern most of our lives. Technology and science have almost overtaken um, any kind of belief system. Man just goes out of his way to not believe in God and continuing to do evil things. Children are being robbed of their childhood innocence, this race to grow up as quickly as possible. So let's hear from our kids. What scares them about the world today? Spiders. I hate darkness because there's monsters there. Me, Pennywise. I find it's ridiculous. The Bible planted the fear of God into us to achieve the same control. And ancient religious texts and prophecies have foretold this moment in our history. What some people call the tipping point, the point of no return. Potentially, the end of life as we know it. Most world religions tell us that at some stage, humanity will be faced with a moment of reckoning. In the Christian Bible, it's based on the prophecies of Ezekiel, Daniel, and Revelation. And it's called the end time. In the Quran, it's the hour, a period of great tribulation, persecution, and chaos. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes. A time when the Antichrist will come to earth and the second coming of Jesus will arrive for the final battle of good against evil. Give or take the names, the end of life on earth is present in all religions. Some sections of the Christian church have predicted how we will see when this is happening. 
It's not easy. Wars, famines, and earthquakes have been a part of human existence as long as we can remember. But since the 19th century, sections of the Christian church have predicted a global conspiracy to impose a tyrannical new world order on humanity. They predict that people will make a deal with the devil to gain wealth and power, and these people will move humanity into accepting this new world government, which will later reveal itself to be the work of Satan, the Antichrist, the false prophet. This evil, the new world order, so obvious it's on the back of a dollar bill. The ancient uh, prophecies tell us a lot about uh, the end of times. Some kind of very charismatic world leader was supposed to emerge at the end of times. And that leader would convince all of his followers to, in essence, do what he, he, he told them to do. And, and the leader would bring about the, uh, the end of days. A lot of people believe that the end of days are happening now. And the evidence we see for this is the climate catastrophe, which is unfolding before our eyes the pandemic, an onslaught really of natural disasters which are heading our way in increasing frequency. According to these religious prophecies, these events will signal the arrival of the Antichrist and a period of turmoil, upheaval and chaos will follow, leading to the final battle between good and evil. This is the time, a time when a new world order will be run by people with all the wealth and power but those people will have had to sell their souls to the devil to get it. So whether or not you believe in demons or prophecies, their new world order is here now, unelected, unaccountable, undetectable, and untouchable. In the Garden of Eden, the symbol of temptation, Eve offered Adam the red pill, and everything changed. So we asked our unstoppable kids, if you were going to learn a truth that would change everything, would you want to learn it? Yes. 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 Looks like our kids might be taking the red pill. Adam and Eve took it and discovered a new reality. We need to take it again and discover another. The thing about it is, this new world order, it's all a big con. It's not real. We don't need to be like this. We don't need to be restricted to only their options. Remember that technology we mentioned earlier? The secret technology they're building and the secret technology that's been locked away? That technology could keep millions of people alive, cure millions more, advances that would give humanity a level of self-control and stability we've never had before. Do you believe it's possible that technological advances are being kept secret from us? It's not a possibility, it's a fact. And I've even read some of the patents and the articles talking about patent suppression. Um, and there's a long history, first of all, in all industries, you have incumbent who, you know, firms and providers who will own a patent to prevent its development. And the way that energy companies and other incumbent technology companies were using the law to stop innovation. There is truth even in the everlasting light bulb. That's actually referring to 1930s and 40s when Westinghouse and General Electric suppressed the compact fluorescent light bulb because they wanted incandescent light bulbs because those used a lot more energy and they needed to make rural electrification um, profitable for them. So they didn't want these efficient rural homes. They wanted them to be energy guzzling homes they could sell them real power to. We have numerous examples of the industry suppressing fuel cell patents. There's been rumors about ocean thermal energy conversion technology, which uses the difference in temperature of the ocean. And yes, automotive companies, uh, Ford Motor Company, General Motors, you know, the list goes on and on. The collusion between business and government means the national security state gets involved. It acts as suppressor general on behalf of its sponsors. It commandeers patents and assets under the guise of national security. And perhaps justified, given that fissile material can do so much damage in, in the wrong hands. Um, I also think that in, in many ways, there's adequate grounds that some certain innovations that have very strong security implications, microwave lasers, for instance, um, is another example. Like those could be used to transmit energy, but they could also make very big weapons. Um, and so, but again, I, I don't think that all of these innovations 
can be kind of classified as security, and the industry sometimes classifies them as security technologies precisely to keep them out uh, of the public eye. So what do you think can happen to innovators who refuse to abandon their ideas? There are tons of people who have created machines, they go to have them patented, and the patents are uh, basically taken by the government. And sometimes the people end up disappearing, the research ends up disappearing. And um, I mean, if you think about it, though, there's, um, I guess, an interest by the mass of companies, especially the fossil fuels companies that control the world. You know, there is an interest of theirs to not allow these things to happen. Just think about the everlasting light bulb, the car that could run on water, and all the other wonders we never had vanished, snuffed out. It's a well-publicized fact. They are keeping us stuck back here in the mud of a bygone era, while millions of children will die from poisoned water, famine, and disease. Here, in 2021. There's one in four people suffering from food insecurity, moderate or severe food insecurity. And so by that we mean people who struggle or worry about their ability to access and afford a healthy, nutritious, balanced diet. We know that one in four children around the world are stunted. So they, in their development, they haven't had enough of enough food or enough of the right kind of food for their body and brain to develop fully. Malnutrition is an underlying cause of death in about 2.6 million children each year. And none of it needs to happen. The technology exists. We do have a form of energy. It's very cheap energy. It would allow un unlimited progress and care of us as a species from what's just right around us. We have the technology to solve the most critical problem of the age, limitless, affordable energy. <laughs>
allow the environment to disintegrate. Happy to see three million children a year die from poisoned water. Happy to trade profit for the health and happiness of all our future generations. Narcissists, some might call them sociopaths, we all know them. Selfishness, a sense of entitlement, a lack of empathy, and a need for admiration. Business leaders tend to score high on measures that reflect sort of antisocial, um, uncaring, unemotional traits. You know, this very confident, entitled, kind of um, almost you know, kind of overbearing or dominant, sometimes aggressive person. People at the top in business, in, um, in politics, for example, people who have narcissistic traits are more likely to be active in politics. People um, have a very inflated sense of their own importance, of their own skills, of their own confidence. The sense of being better or superior to others. We all believe we're all correct, for example. We believe we understand things better than anyone else. Uh, we'll be quite dismissive of our people. Someone who displays a narcissistic character um, will be driven to, towards success, towards um, status, which might be monetary or it could be political power. I think there are many corporate leaders and they may not particularly care who they kind of step on in, in the, the way towards that. So why don't they care about the future? What they leave to their own grandchildren? So what is it that makes one person not care about their children? People can, can have an awareness of what would be ethically be the correct thing to do, but choose to ignore that. There's this idea of, of cognitive dissonance. And that's when you have two conflicting beliefs or attitudes or when your behaviour doesn't match what you tell yourself. So someone may, may love their grandchildren, but don't really feel particularly inclined towards making good environmental decisions. And it relates to the whole idea of the a, a, a selfish gene. This exists to kind of carry around our, our, our DNA and pass it on. Is it as basic as that? They're not interested in protecting you, and they're not interested in protecting your world. With all the beautiful ideas in the world, the potential for spiritual enlightenment, and it all comes down to sociopaths and narcissists with all the power and absolutely no genuine care for the rest of humanity. So if we don't stop polluting the planet, what will happen? What will it be like for our children? If we continue with the current level of emissions, what we'll find is that the weather will keep getting more variable potentially more droughts in areas, more floods in areas. Rainfall is becoming less reliable. We end up with more concentration of chemicals in our rivers, and that has impacts on the ecosystems and can have impacts on our health as well. As the climate changes, we're going to find that we have more of these extremes. You can't survive unless, because you don't have, you can't grow your own food in a city. You can't go to the nearest stream and, and pick up water. So if you're living in a city and that city no longer has water, no longer has food, uh, no, no longer has electricity coming in, you're, you're, you've got to leave. And having exodus from every big city in, in the world, you've got major, major problems. More species being extinct, more human beings having more troubles living in, in places that humans have been comfortable with for thousands of years. The acting now can make a huge difference to future generations, people, you know, who, who are not around yet. There would be no life. We need a room to live on the planet or find somewhere else. We wouldn't have more to go into. The world would be a lot different. People are selfish and they say that people in the future should change it. Like, everything will go extinct. That would just end up in chaos. So, here they are, the New World Order, the untouchables. We know who and what they are now, but who do they think they are? Our tax dollars pay for the technology they're hiding. That's our technology, and we want it back. And not only that, what are they capable of? They can reach all of humanity in an instant, so what else are they planning to lock down their control even more? Maybe a virus. We won't care how or where it starts. We'll just need to be guided, and we'll do what we're told until it's gone. Or maybe it will be something completely different. Later in the series, we'll be finding out, and it's not what you might think. You've seen who they are, this new world order, and why they're planning what they're planning. 
Now find out how they intend to execute their plans. We'll be looking deep into the things we live with all our lives and exposing the evil that drives them. Healthcare, energy, big data, the economy, and lots more. We've been taking the blue pill since birth. It's time to take the red pill. The discovery you're about to make will change everything. Because when you do, when the fog lifts, you'll see a bright light shining on the truth. Heya did it in 37 thousandths of a second. The domination of the untouchables and our dependence on them seems unstoppable. But the desire of the rest of the planet to live, evolve and enlighten is also unstoppable. And just remember why we're doing all of this. To be a helicopter driver and psychologist. I want to create my own restaurant. I want to be a movie are you ready? Are you ready to be unstoppable?